call this evening. Good evening, everyone. Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, mentor. So we have another Sunday coaching series call, 8 p.m. every Sunday. Good evening, uh, Instagram. Good evening, good evening. People starting to join us as well. Instagram, if you want to join us on Zoom, you can always visit GarciaMHU.com and check out any of the links. We do have all... Uh, Good evening, Sonia. Yep, yep. We do have uh, the Zoom going as well. Now, we won't be presenting any sheets, any Excels, but either way, you get a better visual. So it's up to you. Thank you for joining. So, but okay. So we got wholesale this evening. How to not get cut out of a deal. Now, we got some announcements. So make sure you stay towards the end. A couple things that we'll be changing up a little bit as well on these calls. And I know they're a little quick pace, but don't forget every Wednesday, members only. Okay. Every Wednesday, that's where we cover the same topics we do here but a lot more in depth. That's when we really get into the nitty gritty, if you will. All the contracts, agreements, everything you need to see, we'll be covering a lot more on Wednesday. 30 minutes is just not enough to cover, but we try to give you as much uh, tips, nuggets as we can as well. Any Q and A's, any questions, save them towards the end if you can. You can always drop them on the chat as well. Same for you all, Instagram here. Instagram, you cannot unmute yourself, but you can drop a comment. I'll read it out loud. And we do have some questions that have already came in based on this topic. This topic has been requested for a while. If you follow our social media, we do have other videos that we've done on wholesale. How to wholesale, double wholesale, what are each? We're gonna be breaking all that down now tonight as well. A little more in, in detail, if you will. But the calls are out there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. If there's anybody new on here, good evening and welcome. All these calls do get recorded for educational purposes, but they also get shared on our YouTube and any of our social media links. So if you do miss it or you want to watch the replay, Wednesday does not count, by the way. We don't post Wednesday, so no, no on that. That's for members only, but uh, you can catch it. If you want to become a member, go to the website and log in. If it is your first time, you can you can jump onto that call at no fees. So, but all right, let's go ahead and get started, okay? 30 minutes. What is wholesale? Anybody drop a comment. What is wholesale? Wholesale is the most uh, beautiful thing ever been invented, both in real estate and mobile homes. And I like to consider wholesale being a, being paid for your time. Uh, that's how I consider you. You're being paid for your time because you do not have to come out of pocket. And for anybody who's new, like myself, when we first got started, you don't have a whole lot of means to funds, to, to, to money. That's okay. But there's a lot of ways that you can start investing in mobile home investing without having any money. You can be a bird dog, a connector, or a wholesaler. Okay? Even if you're a, a double wholesaler, which is fine, you do have to come up with funds at that point. You know, there's ways to get funding for that. You know, we just got a call probably two weeks ago where we were talking about private and hard money lending. A few people are saying, well, not a whole lot of people like to lend on mobile homes. But you're, not, you're just not talking to the right people. Because if you got the right investment in hand, it really doesn't matter what the product or service may be as much as what the return on your investments are. That's what people are interested in. So you have to be able to pitch that as well. And that's what we had a previous call on is how to pitch deals to a hard private money lender. A JV partner. A lot of you are rushing to let me joint venture. You might want to rethink a few things before you get into more than just a return on your investments. Okay. But wholesale is nothing more than you putting a property, a mobile home in this case, under contract. Yes, with legal documents. We'll talk about those in a little bit. And you're able to assign it. So your intention is not to buy it per se. You're locking it up because it's a good deal. The numbers check out, the markets check out, and you're able to get it at a discount enough where you can mark it up and assign it to somebody else. Simple as that. You're the middleman, right? Now, obviously, being the middleman, you have to have buyers, which we'll talk about as well. You have to have buyers on that, and you have to have the product. Some of you are getting started now, and you're trying to look everywhere. You may or may not be looking in the right areas, but you have to know your numbers. I cannot stress enough. If you don't know what something is worth, if you don't know what the value is of an as-is mobile home, you do not know what to offer. One of the mistakes I see a lot of investors making over and over is they're over offering. You know, if you over offer into any mobile home, when it's time to resell, when it's time to get it back out the market, you're already starting at a deficit, if you will. The numbers aren't there. And what a lot of investors try to do is they'll over market. You, you try to come into the market, you're getting at it, whatever the number you think it is, and you over marketing it and think you're going to make a deal. But the idea is to always be under market, even on your resale, because you have to have that desire if you will, okay? I want to sell something that somebody wants to buy. If you're just another mobile home out, mobile home seller out there at the same prices, you do not stand out, okay? And then you got double wholesale. What is a double wholesale? Double wholesale can be similar to a flip, 
Okay, does not mean you have to do anything to the property. Okay, we do. We are posting one property this week on, on one that we did where it was a simple cleanup. And when I say cleanup, literally housekeeping work. We, we came in, cleaned it up, vacuumed it, whatever needed to, put it back on the market because that's how good of a deal was. Okay, now that wasn't a wholesale, that wasn't a wholesale, that was a flip. But you get the idea that you're getting it at a discount and you're able to put it out there because you're buying it. If you do not have funds and means, go check out some of our, our videos on how to get funding. Okay, you can always reach out to us direct as well, but you are closing on a property. Okay, so when to use each? I prefer double wholesale if I can. Even though it does take money, you are buying in a sense. You, you're buying it, you're getting the title, you don't have to see, you don't have to put it into your name now. Remember that you are buying it and you have control because that's what wholesaling is. You have control over a property, over a mobile home, and then you're able to reassign it. But when to use it, you know, one of the keys there would be uh, if you're making more than what the seller is hit himself or herself. If somebody's selling you a mobile home for five thousand dollars, but you know that the market allows you to resell it for twelve or thirteen thousand, he or she may not be so crazy about you making seven, eight thousand on something he or she's only making five thousand. So for that, I would say you might want to go ahead and double wholesale, close on that one, get the title, get everything you need and get rid of them. They can go on their way. Now it's time for me to work my business with the new buyer, if you will. So that would be one of the times I highly suggest you always do that. Now, closings, which we're not going to cover too much in tonight, but uh, tax accessors and DMV. You know, we, we are not selling real estate. There's no D, there's no real property. So it's nothing more than wholesaling or reselling a vehicle. So the perfect place for that would be a DMV or tax accessors office. But again, if I have the buyer and I have the seller and I'm middleman and they start chatting, they start talking about, which will cover how to keep people from connecting with each other, you know, it may not go well in your case. What do we need the middleman? That will be said. Okay. Let's see. And I'll answer a couple of these questions that I'm seeing on here, Instagram and uh, Zoom towards the end. So let's keep covering because we're moving along. Cutting out. Yeah. Cutting out of a deal. I like to say that never happens, but Good evening, deal. Good evening, good evening, Instagram. My best deal I've ever done in a wholesale was 10000 And uh, that was a double wholesale, okay? Now, this was an older lady who wanted out. She wanted to be done with the property, and she threw a couple red flags, okay? A couple red flags. If somebody's urgent to try to sell, that's a red flag. So I was already, okay, now, you know, I'm willing to go check out the deal, check out the investment and see what it is. But she was a little too eager. That either means that uh, they owe behind on lot rent, they're about to be evicted. Because remember, any mobile home inside of a mobile home park pays lot rent. If they don't pay for a month, that's usually a fine, whatever the fee may be. Month number two, that's typically they're about to be evicted. So they're about to lose a home altogether. They, they don't really have an option to either pay all up front or they lose a mobile home and they get evicted. So that was kind of what she was hinting at, what she was saying that, but I, I took on, so carried on. Then uh, she only wanted X amount of money, which we still negotiate. I do not pay what anybody's asking for. Even if it's a great deal, I'm never going to give you what you're offering. I want $3,000. All right, $29.50. It's, it's, that's the principle. And that's for all of you, okay? Because a lot of you, when you offer something and the seller says yes, you jump up and down and happy and joy. But that means you over offer. That means you could have got it for cheaper. So don't offer, offer on that. But she only wanted uh, $3,000 at that time. And what I ended up doing is we, I didn't really negotiate with her as much as I was trying to go ahead and make the, the deal happen. A couple more people were joining us. So, but I was able to market for so much higher. So she, it ended up being that she wanted to move with her daughter. She was older. She was tired of being alone. The husband had died, all kinds of backstory to that. I said, okay, but we did a thorough due diligence. The one thing that I immediately check is lot rents. Are they paid up to date? Yes. Are taxes paid up to date? Yes, that's part of due diligence. Some of you should be making notes, okay? And all those checked out. So if bottom line is, yes, she simply wanted to be out of the park. She no longer wanted to be alone and she wanted to be out of the picture. So awesome, phenomenal. We put her on a contract. We paid for it in about 30 minutes because we already had buyers, okay? As a wholesaler, we're going to talk about when you need buyers. We are able to mark it up and get a 10K profit out of that, Okay. $10,000 on a simple, quick wholesale, and that's what you can do with many deals. You know, deals are the same, new investments are the same, so keep that in mind. We got some questions that we'll be covering here in a minute, and that's some of the questions I'm asking, that, that I'm being asked, okay? Let me see. So putting the mobile home on a contract, that's immediate, okay? If you, 
if you don't want to be cut out of a deal, you know, some of you don't want to sign contracts because you feel you, you have that contract. It's a contract. I really don't want to get involved. What if I don't have a buyer? How do I get out of it? How do you're doubting yourself more than you should put it on a contract so that everything is legal. You have to do that, but you have to have exit clause to be able to get out of it. If you do not have a buyer. Okay. If you don't have a buyer, then obviously either you're going to have to buy it yourself and rehab it or resell it double wholesale, flip them, whatever you want to call it, flip. I say flip because when you buy a mobile home, whether you do something or not, if you own it for 10, five minutes, whatever it may be, it's yours. You're flipping it. You're flipping it for a higher profit, if you will. Okay. But put it on a contract. List, uh, list it on the market immediately. Okay. List it on the market and always get it at a low enough number. You know, if the market, let's say a single wide, three bedroom, two bath, they're going for about eight to $9,000. That's what I'm seeing. You should be studying the markets, by the way, every day, eight to $9,000. Let's say on that. All right. Well, if I can get a mobile home for somebody asking for 5,000, I probably want to try to get them to more around 3,500, 4,000, depending on the market. Okay. So that I can come in and still add up my profit that I would like to make but I still want to be under the eight or $9,000. If I list mine for the same, you're just another seller. So I would stick to maybe 7,000, 7,500. So you see the profits. If you're at four and 7,500, that's still a 3,500 pay. That, that's a good number. I hope for some of you listening in, $3,500 and you're still under the market. And if you need to drop a little bit more than, so be it. You drop it, you've got profits there that you're able to still make within. Never agree with the uh, Never agree to things that your buyer cannot fulfill. Here's another mistake I see a lot of uh, new wholesalers make, a lot of new investors. They come in and they say, yes, 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 to all the above, all the agreements. Yep, I can agree to everything. And then when it comes time to resell it, wholesale it, the new buyer cannot fulfill that. Now, you cannot make changes alone, okay? The seller does not need to know that you're wholesaling it, if you will. But whatever you agree with him or her, you're going to have to fulfill. And by that, I mean your buyer. If your buyer cannot agree to that, then obviously that's not a deal. You'll have to go back to them, renegotiate, and see if whatever terms are to come in agreement can be done. And at that point, the deal goes through. So don't agree to just anything. Treat every mobile home almost as if you were getting it. If I was getting this, does it check out on this? Does it check out on that? Can I, am I able to do this and that? And if so, then you're able to go on. You have to know more information as well. You know, if a wholesaler comes to me and a lot of them do flat out tell me, I'm a wholesaler. Well, that's fine. You know, I deal with wholesalers, bird dogs, connectors, investors, everybody. I work with everybody. But if you're a wholesaler and you're bringing me a mobile home, I'm going to treat you as a seller. I want to know specifics. What is the year? What is the make? What is the model? What is the bin? Same as serial number. What is the size of the mobile home? If it has a new roof, how long ago? Is it metal on metal? So you see the list goes on. And I started getting, oh, I don't know, uh, I think so. And eh, stop, okay? Give me this information. As a wholesaler, you need to be just as informed or more than the seller. And trust me, a lot of these sellers, when you go out there and you start asking them, one of those things is size. What is the size of the mobile home? Nobody knows. They've been living there 10, 15 years. They don't know, but that's okay. We got systems where we're able to get into and we can find a lot of the information. But as a wholesaler, again, you're going to be treated as the seller. So you need to know all this information. Some of that could be even as simple as what is the school system? Are there any churches around? Yes, you will get asked these things. If a mobile home doesn't have to be moved, for instance, they may want to know what the community is about. Is it an all age par? So you get the idea. Have the information handy. You want to sound professional when you're wholesaling. Okay. And back to one of uh, not being able to do uh, fulfill the agreements. One of those things I've seen, we just saw this past week as a wholesaler came to me. Hey, the mobile home need, needed to be moved. I wholesale it, but the new new uh, buyer cannot move it within five days. Here's a little tip for y'all. I know this call isn't about moving, but typically it's about three to four weeks to get a mover to move your mobile home. So if anybody's selling me a mobile home, I will immediately ask, does it need to be moved? Yes. How much time do I have? Oh, uh, you got a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. No, I need at least four weeks minimum. That gives me time to connect with the mover, be able to move it. If I'm going to wholesale it, that's fine. I want to be able to connect the new buyer with the movers and get them to move it in time within. If it moves earlier, nobody's going to yield, be upset. That's fine. But again, if you're agreeing to, yes, we can move it in five days, nobody, unless you have some in connection with somebody, nobody's moving it. Okay. Never agree to terms like this. So, see, okay, okay, okay. 
seeing a couple of these uh, comments real quick. Awesome. And yeah, y'all pay attention to the chat box as well. If you can, there is some announcements that could put, gets put on there throughout the call. All right. Under contrast, the owner. So let's talk about not getting cut out and a couple more topics on that. Okay. Again, we're moving along pretty good. We're already 20 minutes into it. So the best way to not get cut out of a deal is always stay in control. Put the mobile home under contract, okay? Put it under agreement, and we do have wholesale agreements, A to B and B to C. A to B is between the buy, the seller and yourself. You as the buyer, you're always B. When you're turning around and re wholesaling or even double wholesaling, you're doing a B to C agreements, okay? So two different contracts, two different agreements. And again, neither needs to know anything. You're just, you're in control. But uh, what if you are buying a mobile home? Let's say you got a community park, some older lady, we'll use that example, calls you up and says, hey, I want to sell my mobile home. Uh, if you buy it, I'm going to need about three or four weeks to move out. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. We'll go ahead and check it out, get the details from you. And in my mind, I'm thinking wholesale. And then we'll go ahead and close it, you know, within that time period. The problem with that is even if you do get pictures and you get the details, et cetera, you're always obviously going to try to run it by your buyers and you're going to run it on social media, wherever you need to post it. Well, a lot of these buyers, and I recommend y'all do, is I want to see the property. I want to be able to come in and check out the home, make sure it checks out. So now you have a slight of an issue there. The new buyer that you're going to assign it to wants to see the property where the seller is living. How do you keep the seller and the buyer from talking? Because the best way to get uh, get this discounted from a wholesale deal is by letting them to talk. They will talk and they will wonder who is he, what is he, and okay, suddenly, they're not answering your phone. Your checks aren't going through. That means you're cut out. That's what that means. And we've had that. A couple of deals, one of them hurt more than the other, and it was because of the profits that were there. But it happens, okay? So keep them apart. If you have a family member in the area that uh, whatever the wholesale deal is happening, the investment you got under contract, have them show them the mobile home. Have them send them out. You're going to meet one of my reps. Call them that. One of my reps or one of my partners is going to go out there, and they're going to show you notify the seller. Hey, I have a couple of our buyer investors that want to see the mobile home. Do you mind? And set it up. Set it up like an opening closing would in real estate. If you have multiple people that want to see the mobile home, okay, then set out more like an open house. Set a specific time where you may ask the uh, seller, is there a specific time where I may need, I may need to bring some contractors. I may need to bring some investors with me. It's going to be quick 30 minutes. We're going to go in and out and we'll be done with the property and get you whatever you need information after the fact. And if a mobile home needs to be moved, you will have movers. You will have maybe even somebody goes out and does a permit, does an inspection to check out the home to be able to move, okay? Not to, not to rehab the mobile home, but to be able to move it. DOT, rural regulation, any mobile home that has to be moved, transported from point A to point B has to be checked out. Basically, they're making sure it's not going to destroy it, going down the highway, if you will, okay? So you have that going on, but have somebody boots on the ground. And if it is something that you can drive to, I would suggest do the same, Okay. We have an investor partner over in Mesa, Arizona. He comes up with this idea of how to wholesale. And he says, I do open houses on all my wholesales. What I do is he'll lock up a property under contract the same way I'm telling you to do, put it on a contract, and he'll get as many buyers that are interested. And before they bid, before they're anything, he'll send details and pictures. And he'll tell them, okay, on this Saturday morning, for instance, we're going to have an open house. Now, it's very strict timing from 8.30 in the morning to 9 a.m., example, we're going to have them come in and see the property. Then he reaches out to the seller and says, you know, we have some investors coming in. We, we're going to come in. We don't want to disturb you. I'd like to give you a gift card to IHOP or Waffle House or whatever it may be. I want you to take your family so that you can give us some space to come in. We don't want to bother you. You're not bothering us. Everybody kind of wins if you will. And he does. It works for him. Try it out if it does. Get the, get the owners out of the house so that you can come in and do your business if you will. So, you know, there's ways to get get creative, you know, stay within. So let's see. Uh, so really much nice. I'll answer those in a couple of seconds. So, but now having buyers, okay. You got to have buyers first, you know, any business, it does not matter if it's a product, if it's a service, if you do not have buyers, you don't have a business. It's the way it works. Okay. You have to have buyers first. Now the Apple method way is always have a buyer and then have a product. And that to me is the perfect way to run any business. If you have a buyer list, you're able to go down your buyer's list and say, uh, what is it that you're looking for? And they can tell you, okay, I need a three bedroom, two bath. 
It may be maybe Mr. John. Mr. John will not buy mobile homes unless they're double wides. Noted, okay? Mr. John only wants double wides. Then we got Ms. Johnson. She only wants single wides. You, you see what I'm getting at? So when you create a buyer's list, now you know what to go browse for, what to shop for. I got to fulfill quotations orders. I got Mr. John who needs five double wides. Now, when the five double wides start coming up, again, you start wanting to buy them. And that's how you create it. As a wholesaler, you are on a time crunch. We typically do 14 days. We've done 21 days from time to time. It just depends on the actual closing. As a double wholesale, what we'll do is put it on a contract and we'll put a closing date on the above listed, whatever number that may be. I give myself minimum 14 days, but I like 21 days better. That's just for the closing. Don't ever put something on a contract that you may or may not be able to wholesale. You know, that's, that's terrible. You know, you, you'll ruin your name for sure. The one thing is some people, if they're especially moving out of state, moving out of the mobile home, getting a storage, and you're still trying to find a buyer down to the last minute, that won't go well. Uh, that is a terrible conversation to have with any of them. Hey, y'all, I'm going to have to pull out of this deal because of this or that. That's not something they want to hear. So don't ruin your name with that. Have a buyer first. And if you don't, you better do the best you can. And within a certain amount of time, and I would say if a week out, you still don't have a buyer, call the seller. Hey, after a certain review, certain things that come up at the summer, we're not going to be able to close, unfortunately. I wanted to notify you as quickly as I can so that obviously give you some time. Maybe have somebody else interested and let it be at that. It is what it is. We have had to pull out from a couple mobile homes before. And it was, again, if y'all watched my channel enough, time, time, and time. It was the wrong time. A time of a week before we had all kinds of buyers. The next week, everybody had them bought something. Now we're out seeking. And when you're in a rush, things don't work your way. In case y'all haven't noticed. So, you know, you want to you want to get that. But the way to, the way to fix that is to have a buyer's list. More and more buyers. The more buyers, the better. And get big buyers. Look out for investors. Here's a tip for y'all all. Go to Craigslist and type, we buy mobile homes in the area. Okay? Craigslist, we buy mobile homes. Who do you think is posting ads, we buy mobile homes? Investors. I want to connect with investors who are buying X amount of inventory. Because that's going to be one of my connections to go to. All right. 826. Man, y'all got to come on Wednesday. That's when I get to slow down a little bit and coach a little bit more or a lot more in this case. So we got a couple questions here. The one thing I was going to advise on is we're blasting these calls Friday, Saturday on what's the what's the coaching topic going to be. And somebody asked, can we send some questions in? And I said, sure, send pre questions in and I'll answer them live on the call. Now, those people aren't on the call tonight, as you can see. Say so you, you want to take action, you have to show up. But that's fine. We'll go ahead and answer the questions. Uh, so for the following up, moving forward, we're going to keep posting these calls. And on that topic, anybody who has questions, go ahead and present them to us. We'll write them down. We'll get our admin to give them to me, to me here. And I'll just read them down the line, if you will. But on Wednesday, we will be covering the uh, wholesale agreement sheet. I will be presenting it and telling you how to actually fill out the agreement from top to bottom, things to look out for. And yes, if you need an exit key out of there, to, how to get out of the deal, I will show you how to do that as well. So. I'll take a couple questions from the uh, Zoom here real quick as well. But how do you wholesale? Can you wholesale anywhere? Yes, you can. Yes, absolutely. Wholesale can be done on anything. And don't forget, wholesale, you can do candy, cars, motorcycles, boats, mobile homes, houses, anything. Get it at a discount and sell it at a discount, okay? Do you need a license to wholesale? Absolutely not. You're getting paid for your time. You're putting something on a contract and reassigning it. That's all. Unless you pay for it and it's under your name, then yes, you'll probably need a license depending on, on the amount you have uh, sold. What happens if a seller sells under while you're in a contract? That's a good one there. So what if a seller sells even though you have it on a contract? That has happened. Here's the thing. Uh, pick your battles, okay? If you have something on a contract, depends on the amount of money. By the time you take them to court, you get attorneys, you waste time. Is it worth going after? You know, I would say wa wave your options on that, but pick your battles. Me, myself, when that happened, uh, you know, it was a learning lesson. Don't let the seller and the buyer connect. That's what I was covering earlier. Okay, don't let them connect and you can avoid that. How, how low should I get homes for and sell and still make a profit? Every deal is different. I cannot give you a number on that. You know, get it at a discount. You have to know what the market numbers are. If you know what homes are being sold for, then you know how low you need to come and still have a profit. Some you may be able to do a thousand, some five hundred, some ten thousand. Doesn't matter. Just depends on the numbers. Most I can mark up a mobile home. 
whatever the market will allow minus a discount. Okay, so that's the questions that came in there. A few more people on Instagram, and I know I got a couple on Zoom. So let's see. What are you seeing the cost of mobile homes for two bedroom, one bath, 1990s and up? Uh, it depends on the market. I don't know. It depends where that home is at. Remember, every market county is different. If I buy a two bedroom in California, it may be 200,000. If I buy a two bedroom one bath in Macon, Georgia, it may be 2,000. So it just depends on where that's at. Look at the numbers. Always, you know, with mobile home investing, we don't have that luxury. Realtor, FMLS, GMLS, uh, Zillow, we don't use that, okay? So you have to find out what the ARB is being sold for after repair value. And that's the number you deduct from. To make a deal, I want to know if I were to rehab it, how much material, how much labor, how much holding all adds up and still a deal. Then you know what you can pay for the mobile home. If you are double, host, double closing in a wholesale from A to B, then B to C, do you need capital? If so why? Yeah, so if you're doing a, come on Wednesday and I'll show you how you, you do need capital, but I'm able to use it from somebody else. I love using other people's money. I don't like taking out of my bank account. So yeah, because it's almost like a flip. So you're, you're wholesaling it, but you're really buying it. Because the reason why is you're trying to keep the typically the seller from knowing how much you're going to make. So I want to go ahead and pay them off. Give me the title. We're done with you. And then we go on to our buyer and then we wholesale it, double wholesale, flip it, whatever you want to call it. And then we're able to make the profit. But uh, yeah, you would need profits up front. But I have a strategy how to do a double wholesale um, and use the buyer, your new buyer's money to be able to close on your deal. So join me on Wednesday for that. Let's see, did I miss any? Yeah, but hear that here. Hang on. You, yes, the wholesale paper. Okay, I don't understand the question on this one here. A couple Instagrams that are coming in. So we got, uh, come on. Will the Naples meetup still be on the 30th? Uh, no, thank you for bringing that up. No, it's August 6th. August 6th, we're going to be live in Naples, Florida, where we're going to have a meetup. So August 6th, go to my social media and check that out. Can I hear about that here? Uh, Annie's. How you, uh, I don't want to pronounce your name. Annie, you're saying, can I hear about that here? What, what are we referring to? And um, yes, I need the wholesale paper. <laughs> I need the wholesale paper. Maybe I should have mentioned, I am not an attorney. I cannot give you legal advice. All the information that we're feeding you here for tonight is for educational purposes only. If I were to hand anybody an agreement of, of any kind, I wouldn't be playing attorney, but I can send it to you for educational purposes. So y'all do the math on that. There we go. So we posted the uh, Naples on also on the chat box. So Annie, just go ahead and send me a DM after the call and I'll connect with you directly to answer that question. I don't know what that question is. So good stuff, I hope. I know we moved along pretty quick. 30 minutes are up. It goes fast when you're having fun. Uh, Tuesday, don't forget Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, off market deals. We have new deals we've been visiting. Spent all weekend in Jacksonville, Yulee, Florida, with the, with the Y, Yulee, Florida. I spent some time up there. Tallahassee, we got some deals in those areas. I know a lot of you have been asking about the South Florida. We'll be back down there in Naples in a couple of weeks. But for now, we're focusing on North Georgia, North Florida and uh, South Georgia. So we'll have a deals coming up on that available as well. Stay tuned for that and a lot of other coaching we have. See, absolutely. Shadow, don't forget the Shadow event, October 1st. That's a two-day event. Check out GarciaMHU.com. You get details on that as well. But all right, well, thank you all for joining me this evening. I hope you all have a great night.